Now, we're going to finish the programme today with um, some music and one of the great eccentrics of British pop. I'm the urban spaceman, baby, I've got speed. I've got everything I need. I'm the urban spaceman, baby, I can fly. I'm a supersonic guy. I don't Goodness, it's ages since I heard that. It's the I'm the Urban Spaceman by the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band, of course, um, whose lead singer was Viv Stanshall. In the 1960s, their mix of vaudeville comedy, trad jazz and psychedelia made them hugely popular. That particular track was produced by none other than Paul McCartney. Now, after the band split up in the early 70s, Viv Stanshall continued to make music, but he was also an alcoholic, and when he died in 1995, he left a vast archive of unreleased material which has never seen the light of day until now. Thanks to his son, Rupert, and a team of dedicated fans, this weekend sees the release of two new albums by Viv Stanchel. One of them is a continuation of the Rawlinson End saga, of which more in a moment, and the other is called Dog Howl in Tune. His son Rupert joined me earlier to describe what it was like looking after this vast archive for so long. After death, stuff was distributed as such, and I became pretty much the champion looking after everything, including the tapes. Having them in uh, the front room, in my bedroom, in a, eventually in an airing cup, just everywhere, because they, they take up so much space and they weigh a ton as well. So these things had survived fire, they'd survived flooding, uh, th th these things have been through the mill, so how they even survive? I mean, some of the outer boxes are still covered in silt from when they'd been in the river and all sorts, so it was a monster, monster task. And presumably, I mean, until you started l listening to what was there, you didn't know what was there to a large degree, did you? I had no way of, personally, I had no way of listening to these things. They're two-inch tapes and what have you. So... These things remained absolutely untouched until they went to uh, the studio to, to be baked and transferred and so on. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Ringing in my head on and on like the hunchback's bell. No poor me. Oh, if only I were made of stone. And having now done all of that yeah. and heard what is, the, what is there uh, and with the help of others turned this into two new albums, yeah. what, what do we now get to hear? How much does this go back to tell the story of Viv? I think you'll find that the, the Rawlinson's end is, the, is, as it sounds, it is the end. Um, and it's, it's a completion to that story. So... And just for the benefit of people who, who aren't familiar with, with Rawlinson, give us, a, give us yeah. a sense of what Rawlinson was about. Oh, OK, well, it really is about mad, mad English eccentric, living in his, his huge pad, doing exactly what he likes, a sort of quintessential British colonial lunatic. Um, it's, just, it's a delightful story. The afternoon was the colour of bruises, and beneath it, like a wounded snail, Rawlinson End slept in a fretful, tight-eyed knot. And yet, not a mile away, awake, alive, thumping, and well after closing time, with unsmiling, go-away windows, stood the fool and bladder. It looked very shut, but it wasn't. So that's Rawlinson's End. That, that's one yeah. of the two albums. The other one is Dog Howl in Tune. Well, now this this is um, this is the one that I was really, if I'm really honest, that's the one that I was more excited about than the Henry because the rock and roll. I think that's that that was needed. I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, it, it just put the heckles straight, you know, the, my hair straight up on the back of my neck when I heard it. Love, les And now this has all come to fruition. It's, it's um, well, it's cathartic, frankly. Well, I was going to say, from a personal point of view, 
for you as you go back to the time when all this was first created? And you remember the kind of life that your father led and the kinds of people he mixed with, some yep. mighty big names from the music world. All of that must have come flooding back, didn't it? Yeah, but don't forget, this is just my daddy. <laughs> you know, this is my normal lifestyle with my normal daddy. Um, but you see, a lot of this stuff would have been happening when I was much, much younger, so it would be unfair for me to start listing off, you know, I know Jimi Hendrix came round, I know these people were there. The Beatles, I know they came around and played in the front room on several occasions. I mean, it's just, that was the norm. I'm saying that during what I would describe as the dark ages from when his wife left him in 1983 and abandoned him, basically. That was dark when he was living on search. Like, there, there was hardly anyone coming to visit him down there. Because, I mean, there, there were harsh realities. Of course there were. You know, you, you look at a life that was clearly uh, eccentric and incredibly talented in one sense, but also very troubled in another yeah, without going into gross detail about it, seeing your father, um, you know, drunk and throwing up into potties and that sort of stuff is was heartbreaking. And I think that's kind of the reason why I always felt in my heart that I needed to look after him and bolster him at times. But it's so draining. It's just so draining. And it's not right to put that on a child either, but there we go. And in terms of where we are now... Mm. You talked about that that feeling that you wanted to look after him uh, yeah. since he died. In the release of these two albums, do you feel as if you have now reached that point? Well, at this stage, I'm feeling as though I've done my job. I cannot express the relief. And it, it's it's fear as well, fear that you failed, fear that um, you know he would be angry with the result. No doubt, just like any um, artist, if he heard it and was told it was someone else, he'd go, oh, it's great, told it's his, he'd go, oh, well, you can change this, this, this. And that was part of the problem with him, that nothing got finished. Could there still be more? Oh, there could be. It's a treasure trove. <laughs> Rupert Stanshall on his remarkable father, Viv, 